Episode commencing in 3, 2, 1. Episode initiated. What if you could travel to parallel podcasts? The same TTRPG, the same players, only different dimensions. A season where the swarm attacked, or one where Edros's dreams of being an icon came true. Join us this week when we look at all the possibilities on Crit Sliders. 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 This is your sliding leader, Patrick, here, along with my friends. And we all found a gateway to season five of this show. So joining me in hoping our next slide home will be their last are my five fellow sliders in your sliding players. I just realized I put so, we're sliding like <laughs> so times many times. <laughs> uh, to, and now I'm just hungry. <laughs> to my, yeah, I must have been thinking about burgers. Uh, to my far <laughs> left, he's a soul man with a flair for little Richard Stylings. Good golly. It's Jabert Jabber in a way as crying man Jamfram. Oh man, I just got back from the south and, uh, Boy, they got crystal burgers down there. And oh boy, speaking of sliders. <laughs> oh. Across the digital table from me, the brains of this operation offering his axe to the party. It's Miles making believe as Professor Maximilian Redact. Good evening. To my right, the cute computer clerk that keeps the party grounded. It's Tyler talking as Wade Pradier. Hello there. Uh, to my immediate left, the party's inventive leader, unable to fix his own devices. We have Drew dying to play Zillix Quinn. Ah, it's not my brother. And across from him, ew, it's his brother, Jerry O'Connell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jerry O'Connell's brother, Charlie, is here as a nepotism hire. He wasn't even an actor. <laughs> it's none other than Rebecca rolling Thatcher in Sky. Hello. Gross, Rebecca. You're, you're Charlie O'Connell. Ugh disgusting. I have no idea what's happening right now. It's the hit show Sliders, Sliders, Sliders. which aired, I think, on it, Fox at first. In 1995. But then yep. it, it was about, they would go through multiple, they would slide through different dimensions <laughs> trying to get back home. They would and, do the cha-cha slide specifically. Uh, they basically had a, a remote control that would open these slide ports, and then it became a flip phone. And then uh, it's notable for having Gimli from Lord of the Rings in it as hmm. Professor Maximilian. I can't remember his last name right now. Like the actor or the actual character? Maximilian <laughs> Gimli. Okay. Okay. The actor. Uh, yeah, they took Gimli from from Middle <laughs> Earth. Would have yeah, watched that show so them. much more if there was a dwarf <laughs> wanting to chop everything in half. With his that axe. would be so. Why awesome. did we destroy the sliding device? But, but it moved from whatever network TV it was on to the Sci Fi Channel, and at that point, they started just. The, none of the cast is sticking around and to the point where the final season doesn't even have any of the original cast members in it. And all oh, five bro. seasons available on Peacock. You can go watch them right now. And I'm making it. Uh, you know what? I, I, lo- I love rap- sliders. So you I did get- too. I loved that show until it got bad. I'll be honest. I never watched the final season because I don't think I have either. Uh, <laughs> something when, I have when- to grapple with every single day of my life is the fact that if you ran a contest and the limitations were drew, you could only, you could only say factoids or tidbits that, you know, <laughs> specifically about sci-fi television. And on the other side, Tyler, you can list any factoid across any topic, whatever you want, you would still beat me on a one to one, <laughs> like head to head. <laughs> I'd have absolutely no chance. All my collective uh, it, knowledge, it, it sounds would like still come up short. A, a great Patreon episode, <laughs> <laughs> Drew versus Tyler, nerd trivia off fact uh, versus guys, fiction. <laughs> bef- before we get started tonight, a very special. Shipment came in the mail from from Kaizo today, and I wanted to share it with you, but also not share it with you. It's the source book oh. for Starfinder called The Gap. It's all the, the secrets Gap. of The Gap, and including what actually happened the entire time to Galerion and during <laughs> The Gap when everyone's forgetting. It's it's amazing. I can't believe you're not allowed to see this because it's only for GMs. But now, it, does that so also include the Banana Republic? <laughs> yes, it, it's all Gap products, gaps in teeth. <laughs> it talks about there's a whole <laughs> chapter on hitting braces. Uh, baby and, Gap, uh, Baby Gap is a big the one. Adventures of the Old Navy. Lots of warnings about minding the gap. Yeah, it's it's yeah. it's weirdly 
diversified. So is it just a lore book? No, this was their April Fool's release. It is indeed a a blank note. Oh, it's a blank <laughs> notebook. <laughs> That's funny. But it is it is funny. It is the first product that they sold with the Starfinder 2E logo on it, which I really enjoyed. So I mostly nice. wanted to get it for a notebook for, you know, TTRPG goings on stuff writing down. Yeah, that's fun. Um, yeah. And maybe maybe also it could be something that we auction off in, in the future. If you want all the secrets of the gap, maybe I'll write all my secret notes for the podcast. And <laughs> I don't know. I don't keep a physical notebook because all of my notes since we started the podcast have been digital. <laughs> so I don't know. I'm running out of space in my notebook, so I might switch to my gap book. Oh, we'll see. Oh, no. Is this the same book you've had for seven years? <laughs> uh, I let's see what the first entry is from. While she's looking, Patrick, if you do auction that off, please write on every single page. I hate all my players. I hate all my players. <laughs> just, like, uh, just, just, just Jack Torrance. The, the it. Yeah, just Jack Torrance, the whole book. Except cool. on, the, on the very bottom right corner of the very last page. Except Rebecca. <laughs> so I thought you were going to say so much. <laughs> this notebook I started with episode 79 from March 18th of 2019. Oh, wow. So season, two. season two, very beginning almost. Yep. Where's the season one notes? Are you guys ready to get back into the adventure? Yeah. The excitement of no. Starfinder 1E? Oh, that's two. <laughs> Can't talk about D E yet. Uh, last week on Cosmic Crit, you all worked towards fixing up Plostov City with uh, vignettes showing you helping the theater, the general store, the butcher, and Lapley the veterinarian. The town thanks you with a number of gifts. And Mayor Zalni asks one more favor. Find the exploration team led by Oskana in the Lost World Jungle Plateau to the south and be aided by the carrier drone you all named Spare Parts. Uh, traveling south, you found the hover truck abandoned in the forest before moving inside the mountains here. There was a message from the team that they would explore on foot. Following month-old tracks, you all were attacked by a large plant with large barbed leaves that attacked Asher first. After dispatching this ancient Lumacantha, you created two die grenades from its sacks. Oh, uh, well, what's wrong with this? Team, I uh, think it's good. The pronounced gifs. <laughs> no, don't you dare. I, 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 <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> I went back and listened to it. I was like, what is your bird smoke? I was like, no, nah, I said gifs. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was a it was a approved gaff. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it's good. Good job. Are Patrick. you saying there's nothing wrong with this? I'm saying there's no. I, I mean, other folks can can try to weigh in here, but I think there's I think there's nothing wrong. I didn't hear anything. I didn't. I, no, nothing. Nothing raised an alarm bell with me. Mm -hmm. Rebecca Even got Oscana and, I, and, I and not Oxana. <laughs> the <laughs> yes, only I've, thing that I've I I've said Oxana so many times, but it is Oscana. <laughs> it does not sound right to me that. Asher got attacked first, but I could just be misremembering. I thought I thought about that too, but the fact is that like I can't even I can't even come. That would be the only thing that I would even randomly guess at, and I couldn't even. So then I and everything and all the other guesses I have like literally zero. So I'm hoping that I mean, you all true. all to agree that this is a perfect last time on. There's no errors outside of many spelling errors. <laughs> And then if you are correct, you get the episode reroll. Sound good? It's uh, all or nothing. All right. I guess that's fine. Go for it. All right. Well, I am happy to say you guys are very incorrect about your assuming this is correct. There are five things wrong with this. Oh, time. boy. <laughs> you did not help out and have a vignette in the general store. It is not a carrier drone. It's a porter drone, of course. Spare parts, the porter. <laughs> you, you I didn't the, know that those were two different wow. things. You wow. didn't go to a jungle plateau. You're going to a, a lost valley. I would have like also accepted canyon to uh, the south. In a lost valley, we made the salad dressing joke a lot. And uh, oh yeah, you found the hover truck valley. 
<laughs> yeah. yeah. You, you found the hover truck on top of the mountain before descending into said valley. So it was on the mountaintop. And indeed, Jamfram was attacked first by the ah. ancient Lumacantha. Which yeah, was that, that was the only thing that I really caught was I thought, I thought Jamfram got attacked first, but I'm... Yeah. It happened, it, guys. I got a re. I got a re-roll. That's a re-roll. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I so tricked, yeah. Good job, Rebecca. Your instincts were right, but I couldn't think for the life of me. I was like, well, maybe that one. But then what? I'm like, yeah. I can't see. This is about as hard as I do feel real really bad. I do feel real stupid not knowing that he was a porter dro- drone and not a carrier drone. I, I those there's such distinct differences between the two yeah. things. <laughs> Everyone, everyone knows well, porter drones he, go like this. Wubble, 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 wubble. <laughs> <laughs> your birds, your hand uh, gestures are so perfect for that. <laughs> wubble, wubble, wubble. No, it's so funny because he's a porter drone and all he says is, "Can I carry that?" <laughs> <laughs> and I carry her that for you. Doesn't go around saying I want to port that. <laughs> Let's get the porting. All right. Well, Thank unfortunately, good job, Patrick. Yes, <laughs> I feel so good <laughs> after you all just demolish these questions. Usually week to week. This week's episode starts, of course, in the steamy mystic jungles of Plostov's Lost Canyon. Steamy uh, as- mystic jungles. <laughs> it does. The, it's got a little cadence to it. The yeah. steamy mystic jungles of Blast of Lost Canyon. Uh, the team from Viridian is exploring their dusty charter counterpart to the south that orders their nation. And indeed, now you're in those steamy jungles in the Lost Valley in these canyons to the south of that settlement. <laughs> You've picked up on some tracks in the the jungle. It looks like it, it could be a while getting through the very thick underbrush of, of this area if you want to continue following them. But let me ask while you guys are out and about, we, we, we're still on the map from last week. Yep. Yes. The map where you fought the Lumacantha. I'm so, I'm so distracted because Rebecca's like hugging her he cat violently. <laughs> it looked like you were like, come here, give me He a was hug. hugging me. He had his claws in me. <laughs> Every time uh, we sit down to record, that cat really just wants all up in your business. <laughs> it's it so dis- that's why I usually don't look at you guys when I'm going through stuff. There's always always some fun background shenanigans. Yeah, well, while I'm I'm looking at the map here, can you tell me what would you like your marching order to be as you're going through the jungle? Does anybody want to stay in Redacted's vehicle? You are basically going to be slowed down to a march so you can you can go outside the vehicle in order to follow these tracks. You will at least a few folk will have to be outside of the vehicle. I would like to not be in the very front, but I can help track because I do have survival. So mm-hmm. toward the front. Yeah, that that's very, mm-hmm. yeah I, I think I'll, I'll take up the front with my shield raised as I'm as I'm going if I can. Uh, okay. Zillix will shield for uh, mm-hmm. Zilix will use his sticky hands and feet to stick to the top in almost sniper style to be able to mm-hmm. to pop, but then also be able to jump into action if necessary. Okay, so on the vehicle, pop got to it. pop. What what about Brady or Tyler? The back in the back with the Porter drone spare parts and Kelly Wumpus. Yep. Oh, they 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 provide excellent color commentary the entire time that really only you can hear back there Brady this Caddy Wumpus is just non-stop prodding the AI and pointing at something and be like what, what is it over there <laughs> just pointing at like a random dead leaf on the ground he's like that is a leaf <laughs> computer identify identify <laughs> <laughs> that is another leaf <laughs> what about that <laughs> that is the first leaf again. <laughs> the porter drone uh, like purposely like rolls its treads over the leaf as it, it like moves out of the way to destroy it. <laughs> Why we just run over? <laughs> Please stop. <laughs> we'll be here all day. Yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna cast a you know command and silence. <laughs> <laughs> Spare parts is a unliving construct. Does not have. Oh, not on, not against spare parts. Not against spare parts. Oh, and Caddy Wampus also a uh, <laughs> mindless creature. I don't know how. Oh, but... oh you got me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> such a shame. Well, <laughs> technically has a brain, but it's pretty much on autopilot. 
you you see seen in cartoons when they go inside a character's mind and there's like a little hamster on a wheel there's no wheel but there is a hamster and that hamster is also mindless so if you if you if you were to autopsy him it would be like that scene from men in black where the head splits open and there's just a tiny little little guy in there except it's a tiny little hamster at the controls mm-hmm. yeah pretty good that's- that's what happens. That is now canonically how space goblins work, I think. Right. Write it in the gap book. Let me get my pen out real quick. So you come across, I guess, kind of in the next hex, you get very scant footprints every once in a while as you do go over some more forested, like a heavy carpeted forest area here that has like a, a thick lichen growth seems like a, a moisture area of this luscious jungle um, so every once in a while you'll get to see the same footprints that you're following but it's few and far between but they seem to be heading to a large body of water as you eventually get to a point where the jungle kind of opens up and you are facing what looks like a massive emerald lake no no blue water it's all green as you as you get to it a bright pearlescent looking green and as you get closer to it you see indeed what looks to be well why don't you guys make me a life science physical science or survival check as you get closer to the water well wasn't i rolling ones last week too yeah it looks like redacted you've you've got the got the tyler curse this season miles i don't know what to tell you there's no other way to put it tyler you by not making a a melee character you've broken the curse here because you don't have to roll d20 it's early ever well i don't broken's a strong term morphed it into something manageable (laughs) is really kind of what's happened you took one look at uh, Miles and and screeched at him thinner, and now all of his dice rolls are <laughs> ones and twos. He smeared that curse all over his all over his dice. Oh uh, no! Huh? Yeah, so it looks like both everyone except Redacted is very wary of this water. Indeed, you see what looks like a large, either fungal or uh, to get closer and to examine. Uh, algae growth within the water which is given at this green color so you know this is going to have to be extremely heavily processed if you wanted to drink in it um it's probably fine because it does seem like there's a lot of not a lot of life in in the water but it is is musty smelling but it'll probably be safe to to swim in life in the water seems more concerning somehow right Well, you don't. Yeah, it doesn't seem like maybe it maybe it's like over oxygenated the water. So you don't see like tons of microbes that might not be able to to thrive in water like that. But as you get closer and you're examining said water, something see catches your eye. Why don't you guys make me a perception check as well? Oh, Oh, gosh. Look at that. Oh, I was about to say, please be miles. But no, (laughs) Drew rolled the one this time. I rolled the 20. Oh, Miles, hey, what, would, would you rather have all the dice rolls or would you rather have nothing but ones and 20s? Can, like flip a <laughs> coin <laughs> for your... I don't know, because at least with all the <laughs> dice rolls, like you can kind of get like a decent consistency. Yeah, I was about to say, if Pathfinder... If it's TV, one or the other, like you either... Are, I mean, it could be a wild time either way. I would get sick of rolling ones on the attack. It's like, I guess I do nothing no matter what. Right. <laughs> no matter what. That happens enough as it is. Oh, so what is a natural 20 for a radier or no, for a, a redacted? Sorry, Miles. That's a 29. 29. Oh, my, my. So with that, not only do you see what I was going to tell you anyway, there is indeed what looks like something red floating maybe like 15 feet 20 feet or so offshore kind of submerged a little bit looks fairly stationary not only do you see this it's very easy to spot against the greens of the 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 water algae here but looking around you also notice what looks like signs of a a struggle on the the lake shore there's some some broken plant life what looks like maybe drag marks in the the mud and eventually you do find some more footprints boot prints and bullet casings and spent ammo magazines kind of submerged in the 
the silt and the water near the, the water's edge. I mean, Redacted would point that out for the people who are getting their hands dirty, which Redacted is clearly above doing. I think, yeah, Pradier and Asher and Sky, you rolled enough, well enough to, to see the signs of this sh- supposed struggle as well here. You say there are bullet casings and spent magazines. Is there any sign of like, I don't know, bullet holes or I don't know, the direction of such struggle? I mean, it's all along the, the coastline here. I guess the only other thing of note is whatever this red floating bit in the water is. And like I said, about 20 feet off the, the coast, it doesn't look like it's very easy to to see. Maybe it's behind some reeds and things, but it could be it could be a body. Deed, you're not you're not sure from this distance. Can we throw something at it? Yes. It bounces off the surface of the water and sinks down a little bit. It doesn't doesn't give you a lot of information about what it is, though, unfortunately. Well, but if, I have. I'm can we sure make a alive. boat or a raft <laughs> of some kind? Because they don't really want to go swimming in this water. But if we can float to it, I have a cable line, but that's not going to help me float. Does well, anyone st- have a bedroll or something? <laughs> we're still in aerial space wagon mode with redacted. Perfect. Yeah, I've got the sky yeah. boat. <laughs> Yeah, do it. Do you, do you want to float down and, and go kind of fishing? Can we float over to to Asher and Sky and toss them a bedroll? Can you? What? Can you float over? No, explain yourself. I don't understand, Drew. Yeah, she was just asking for like a something to float on, and we're uh, saying that we're just going to float over and then toss her something to float. Oh, on. yeah, it's okay. That's that does. The joke, He's uh, just being mean. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, use I, the use the flying boat. That's fine. <laughs> the flying ship. You, Patrick, you, sorry, did you say it's a, it was, it's a body? It, I mean, it very well could be. It doesn't look natural, at least. You don't see any other is bits it, of color in the, the water here. Is it more than 10 pounds underwater? You wouldn't be able to tell until you got over there, perhaps. Well, okay. Can I cast Psychokinetic Hand? And if the hand can only move something, that's 10 pounds. So if it's <laughs> 10 pounds while on like with buoyancy then it then it won't move if it's under 10 pounds with buoyancy then psychokinetic hand will drag it or no pull it along how far can your psychokinetic hand move uh 25 feet plus five feet every two levels so that's going to take it up to 35 feet okay so getting over there to the edge of the water you know close enough to the edge of the water you start scoop in water maybe away from the surface to kind of dislodge this thing it, it there's definitely not 25 feet of or sorry 10 pounds of of weight to whatever this is but you're pulling it up through like a ton of reeds that seem to be it, it's like snagged on disturbing the water a little bit around the the coastline here but as you pull it up out of the water What is it that you see? Mm -hmm. What is it? What is it? There is a a lots of bits of green kind of mildewing on what looks like the torn vestiges of a piece of clothing. It looks like kind of like a flannel, red flannel shirt, maybe with like a sleeve missing and one kind of cuffed up and bits torn, perhaps in in a few places. I'm sure plenty of them wore flannel. Okay, okay. <laughs> but, so this was oh, the only on the planet who's wearing flannel. <laughs> These people love flannel. It's crazy. Is this yeah. the trademark Alindra flannels that you hear so much about? <laughs> she saved the flannel. universe in Birkenstocks <laughs> oh, and well, flannel. There, there was already. No, that, I that immediately first thought of Thistle too. I was like, yeah. I are. I, are, are we going to find Thistle here? Is she on <laughs> that would the expedition? Wait, she's in, a, she's in yeah. another section. She was not a member of the team. <laughs> better be safe. All right. Yeah, oh, she better be. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, eventually, Starfinder 2E is going to have Horizons of the Vast Part 2, and this will be like a main <laughs> NPC, I'm sure. <laughs> she better be. But yeah, as you are plucking this out of the water, maybe bringing it towards the shore, the the waves, the rippling waves from where you have pulled this thing out of seem to start bouncing backwards towards you as you see another another item perhaps moving in your direction. It may take us to a m- m- map. 
It's an arm with a constellation tattoo on it. True. It better it's not fun. be. If you kill Alindra, I'm gonna be really mad. Any of that you. Would go- any of you that would, <laughs> that would absolutely go down as one of just like the most dark, mean DM things anybody has ever done. To like <laughs> to murder a, a, a former player character off screen is unbelievable. Fan favorite too, yeah. Demeaning. I definitely couldn't do something like that. That's not in me. That's that's not who my mama raised. I but I will forever. <laughs> extend this Schrodinger's Alindra scenario where she is both alive and dead until you find her corpse. <laughs> it's I love that Discord does huh. not want him to say what he just said she's, and completely blocked out what he definitely not possibly dead. Right. Here, here's a, well, a... We're on a map. Let me go ahead and... Um, are we? Yeah, we're, we're on a map-ish. Roll to the right. There we are. Okay. Let's say I will I will undo last week's map so you guys can focus up. Oop, that didn't work. Oop. I like that the token that you're using for the Porter Drone spare parts is, if I recall correctly, the same automatron that you have to fight in the first book of Dead Sons before you get to the Sunrise Maiden. Your the mm. ship, I think it's called the Sunrise Maiden, mm. the ship that you get. Yeah, it's one of my favorite little robots yeah. from Starfinder. He's well, got a lot, of, a lot of character. Well, well chosen. Even though he's just basically fat Johnny Five from the description. He's like a tank treaded. What, what uh, else could you want? Drink. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not fat. This is how I was built in the factory. <laughs> I, how dare I you? <laughs> I, I have a 1,200 pound load bearing. Yeah. I'm not fat. I'm thick walled. Right. <clears throat> As... As you start plucking this thing from the water here, uh, you see the outline of a large squiggling mass coming towards oh. you through the algae. Can you guys make me an issue? Oh, we the, done did it now. Oh, you done goofed up. You fell into this. my water trap. Tr- my trap at water. Well, huh. well, well. I thought I rolled the same as Asher and Sky. But, oh, but only because I saw the <laughs> same three numbers. But I'm listeners, so there's a difference. A decimal point. There's a difference between <laughs> 3.01 <laughs> and Ashford's guy's 30.1. <laughs> I legit looked at Tyler and Rebecca. I was like, they rolled the same thing. How is that possible? Wait a minute. That's not possible. <laughs> 3.01 on the Ooh, initial uh, turn That's order. embarrassing. <laughs> and that's not even a one. That's a two. Wow. And a Asher and Sky of 30. I don't know if I'm beating that one. I think that is the, that must, that might be one of the largest initiative disparities uh, I've seen in a long time. <laughs> oh gosh. It's pretty, pretty darn low. I, uh, there's no way for me to beat <laughs> in the initiative turn order Asher and Sky. So. You catch a glimpse of this thing beneath the water. So it is in a pretty full cover here. Show you what it is. It's everyone's favorite dinosaur. A plesiosaur. A magical Leopleurodon, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> it is pretty, pretty wicked looking. I really like the art that they oh, added for this. No, they, they were so close, but the chin tentacles need hands at the end of them. Yeah. <laughs> then, uh, then, then I would, it would be, be happy. then it would be historically accurate. <laughs> 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 the real Asher and Sky, you are up first as you notice. Obviously, Prater is way too preoccupied with pulling this musty, dank, ripped shirt out of the water to notice that the waves are now bouncing back to the shore in greater frequency as this thing is moving beneath the surface and getting closer to probably. How about a nice prey to your size snack? What would you like to do? Okay, I assume that I did not have my gun out, so I'm going to have to pull my sonic pistol out and therefore cannot trick on this Mm -hmm. attempt to hit. Mm -hmm. But I will shoot. Hold on. How far away am I? Yeah, I'm in range. No, I'm not. Hold on. I have a 40 foot range. So it is it is slightly underneath the water. So if you want to move to the water's edge. I think you'd just be within range. Okay, I can do that. All right, so I'm going to move forward into, yeah, to the water's edge and attempt to hit it with my Thunderstrike pistol. Okay, 
Like I said, it's got the, the old soft cover from being underwater still, but oh my goodness, an 18 on the dice. 27 to hit, though. That is a hit. All right, so that does six sonic damage. Yeah, <laughs> from Prater's point of view, you're, you pull this sure of the water and Asher and Sky just start to blast <laughs> blast the water <laughs> surface immediately, <laughs> but indeed rippling the waves away with a sonic blast indeed reveals a large fin kind of like slapping forward picking up steam and, and coming closer towards you guys. Jamfram, you are up next in the turn order. Also, oh. good, good roll from Jamfram. Oh, he's coming right for us. Let's see. I I'm, I'm, I'm think I'm diving in. I think I'm diving in. Going oh, in I forgot you got a really good swim speed. Too. I mean, oh, really, no. not, I mean, not really good, but it's good. And it's, it's, it's a swim speed. It is. A, <laughs> you have a swim speed, which is really good for swimming. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Oh, can, can I get a re- quick refresher on in water combat? Is that? Yes, I have those notes exactly ready because I was totally prepared to lose the initiative role. Like I always, <laughs> underwater combat. If you don't typically attacks that aren't electricity uh, no that are electricity have a minus four regular attacks a minus two if you're under the water attacks from above the water have cover you know things have cover underneath the water Mm -hmm. Uh, what else no no real thrown weapons under the water Mm -hmm. and most underwater attacks deal half damage but piercing does full damage Piercing does full. Right, 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 right. And fire does a whole bunch less <laughs> underwater. Yeah. Ooh, let's see. So I've got yeah. well, so I'm I might just need to I'm just gonna step in front of Prady here. I don't know. Uh, uh. The thing is I'm pretty sure this thing's gonna have a lot of range. A lot of reach. It is so, a huge shape under the water. Yeah. Um I'll stand here and I'll align my shield towards it. And that'll just have to be my turn. Okay. Uh, that's going to take us to Papa Plesiosaur. Let's see here. Oop. Not a high initial roll, but higher than most of you folks. It did. I, I think if it pops its head up on its turn as it's moving forward, it just kind of like knocks the shirt out of the air, <laughs> like where you're holding it, Tyler. And it does have range from the water to get at Crater, Jamfram, and or Asher and Sky if it moves forward. I'm going to roll. No, actually, it says in the book who I'm going to attack, doesn't it? Plesiosaur. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. It just says those that can reach from the water. OK, so this is going to be it's going to be a random roll between the three of you folks to see who it's going to move into. Try to kill. That's a Jamfram. I've rolled a, a Jamfram on a D6. So you, rolled a, you rolled a D6 and somehow Jam from is on that one. Wow, <laughs> weird. <laughs> well, I mean, I'd, I'd prefer to attack right here, honestly. <laughs> oh, no, no. I, I, I was sorry. I was just I was joking that the, <laughs> there it was a D6, but then, then my name was on it. But, but oh, never, yeah. 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 <laughs> the, the, the dice came up. Jam from. I rolled a D6 and I just go kind of go down the initiative turn order for listeners cool. who might want in info on how to randomly attack their players. So it, yeah, it does have to move forward. And then it, that's long neck is giving it a 15 foot reach. Oh, okay. never mind. It's got even more reach than that, but it's going to move within 15 feet. And that puts it within range of potentially prettier as well. I thought your characters would know this unless you really like dinosaurs it's going to it's going to throw a bite at you long neck raining out of the water oh <laughs> yeah super hit <laughs> 19 oh on the dice oh boy. I've got this is a very basic creature it has like n- zero special abilities except long neck you know <laughs> so <laughs> as uh, long neck is dinosaur <laughs> it is a higher level thing though so I'm taking a great card Oh boy. Hey, oh boy. Crit card. That's a thing that happens, right? When we roll a 19. No. I think so. Is it? Or do you only Is get it? the critical? I thought we just applied just the, the critical, critical damage if there yeah. was. I'm, I'm jumping like ahead. Critical, critical oh. effect. I'm, I'm, yeah, just the critical effect. So this is just regular hits. Let me roll some damage. A lot of damage, so I mean, it's not nothing. It's almost max damage. It Good is point. 23 points of piercing as it clamps down. Three. 
bites right through a good amount of armor, a good amount of shield, That's bouncing true. right through it. Roar, the plesiosaur says. It lets out a, I imagine it's somewhat lion-like, a little elephant each. That's its all turn, Zillix. Fell. True. All Don't right. You. Can I life science this thing? Oh, I wish you would, Drew. I wish you would try figure this out. Oh, well, there you go. That is that is a, a success, single success here to figure out the plesiosaur, the dinosaur. This is indeed perhaps an alien version of a, a dinosaur that's been seen on many planets in packed worlds before. What would you like to know about it? I've already kind of given up the goats that has like zero special villain. So how about weaknesses? Sorry. There are no weaknesses. I can tell you it's uh, weakest. Strength. No, I can tell you you've already asked uh, a defense thing. I can tell you it's it's uh, either it's EAC or KAC. It's fortitude, reflex or will save or can tell you which is its weakest. Hmm. Weakest it's not a, save. It's, not a, it's EAC. It's 19. It's a sweet, sweet 19. That's that's great news for everybody. That's great news mm-hmm. as a gun forms in Zillix's hands and he takes a shot. <laughs> Energy weapons bring it down. <laughs> Where I moved it on the map, it kind of looks like it's wearing that scrap t-shirt you <laughs> grabbed from the water. Oh, no, Drew. Oh, no. We're starting that's off. That's a way to start us off, my With man. An, a lot of natural ones here. Womp, womp. What, what weapon is this you've formed? It's the uh, excavation laser. Excavation laser. Might be time to retire that. Let's see with this crit fail, official crit fail card. Oh, wait, do, do you want the official? I, this, it seems like this hasn't happened in five ever, but official crit fail card or the Crittermander created critical fumble deck. Let's see oh. what our, our, our listeners have in store for old Zillix here. Let's do the, the Crittermander deck. For a ranged shot. This one's not too bad. It's, well, I mean, it is bad because it's called Oops, My Bad. It's made by Egyptoid. Your ranged shot goes way, way long and strikes something valuable. It says the fighting will now probably attract attention of local law enforcement. I don't think that's going to happen out here in the Lost Valley. <laughs> but a no, random another object- plesiosaur shows up. It's just wearing a badge. Random object in the vicinity gains a broken condition. I'm going to say this shirt <laughs> floating in the air already had broken condition. So you laser it to death. It, it goes up and burns up to Most shreds. You entirely, say. almost entirely to shreds. In fact, I'm going to just delete this little thing I've drawn on the map here. That piece of evidence is gone, and it's thanks to Zillix. <laughs> That's what you did. Um, Sorry. Red- Redacted, you, you are next, sir. Okay, that dude's gonna move up north a smidge and then take a shot. Laser pistol? Mm hmm. Swing and a miss. We know the EAC is 19. We're moving on to a Praetor. A Praetor, Tyler. Uh, I have no idea how long your reach is, and that's unfortunate. Mm hmm. I'm going to take a five foot step backward, though. Mm-hmm. And let's see if I'm far enough away. <laughs> I cast a spell. Mm-hmm. Why'd you move forward? I, I didn't have him in the right spot when I deleted the T-shirt. Oh, well, that. that was great. I'm glad I made a bunch of decisions based <laughs> on where his current position was. But yeah, five. Foot oh, yeah. Casually back. cheating in the chat. <laughs> that five foot step back. It doesn't provoke an attack of opportunity because it can. You want to cast a spell? What spell are you casting? What, what spell are you trying to cast? I, I was going to do a level one mind thrust. Level one mind thrust. Because I'm just, I want to see if A, if I was out of reach. Oh, well, see. There I'm making go. a will see. save. It fails. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Astute listeners will <laughs> understand I accidentally revealed it had what I thought was a 15 foot reach, but in actuality is 20 foot. And you were in the range, but now are not moving five feet away. Fantastic. 2d10. That's that high it has a play. brain, everybody. Praetor shouts out gleefully. <laughs> we know how to take it down. Spread the word. Shoot its <laughs> brain. <laughs> All right. That's oh, too whoops. much damage. I rolled, <laughs> I rolled twice. Sorry. <laughs> you rolled d20s for damage. Incorrect. 
I got really excited. I got really excited about the whole brain thing. Oh, pretty high damage. Thing. 16 points of mickle. 16 points of neuron damage. Okay. So far, that's the only damage this guy's taken, which means going to eat Brady here. Uh, at your in sky or turn two on to you. What would you like to do? I have my gun out. I'm going to now trick and attack or attempt to. I think I'll step back just slightly. Okay. I think you you technically won't be able to step, but your movement does not provoke. So Right. Yeah, that's fine. You only want to step five foot back because you can take your ball Yeah, because I want I want to stay in range. How far, I mean, how far back can I go without being out of range? Brand question. How what's the range of your pistol? Forty feet. Yeah, I mean you're only twenty feet away from it now. So, so I could recommend. step like back here. Yeah. Yeah, I'd recommend more because you know, it's gonna it's gonna yeah, bite you not, for right? making a range attack. Well, if you had only taken five foot, that would have been within twenty feet. And I uh, literally just said <laughs> It's strange. Yeah. All right. So yeah, moving back, fair. take your trick and shot. All right. All right. CR 16 Ooh. or lower <laughs> and a 29, a natural 20 on the attack. <laughs> oh, oh, spicy. Critical hit. Quite, quite spicy. <laughs> it's now I reveal this thing is actually a Meba that is immune to critical hits. It wasn't a plesiosaur. It's an algae sore all along. <laughs> no. I wish. I wish it was an out. I wish algae swords were a thing. First off, second off, I wish this was one. I have I have to find a, a member of our amazing Patreon supporters to give a critical shout out to if you want to join our Patreon and get them sweet, sweet critical call outs. Let's oh, let's thank <clears throat> our good friend Alexandra. Alexandra, thank you so much for being a Dragon Master Rising level and above for over a year and a half, I believe, uh, since that uh, came about. This critical shout out is for you. I imagine this is going to be a lot of damage. <laughs> Rebecca. Yeah, I, I I rolled another 3d8 because my trick attack damage gets doubled as well, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's right. And do I get a, a card as well? If you want, but I, I can't imagine it's going to be better than your massive critical damage you've already rolled. Well, it's 52 damage, and my critical effect is deafen. Mm. Let me take a look here. Energy attack. Splayed energies. It says make an additional attack without expending additional ammunition as if the attack had the blast weapon special property. I don't that would I think that's for like a an area a thing so I don't think that would affect this guy here but okay. how much do, I'm sorry excuse me excuse me Rebecca how much damage did you just say my brain's not processing I think that. I said 50, 52 hold on hold on let me double check my math 8 plus 8 plus 13 plus 15 44 44 okay all right good well that is still enough to bloody yeah, bloody uh, this creature as this sonic blast hits it like squarely in w where you would imagine its ear to be. Perhaps it's its receptors uh, on its head and it kind of like uh, goes woozy for a minute here as it kind of tries to shake it off. Uh, but that is a significant chunk of damage. What was I looking up before I went to... Oh, it doesn't have any response or anything like that. It just takes a ton of damage. <laughs> yeah, no DR, no nothing. <laughs> that will take us to Jamfram. Your turn. All right. I, I'm indeed going to wade into the water here. Oh, you foolish fool. <laughs> you absolutely foolish fool. So this thing is mostly out of the water. You're mostly out of the water, so we don't have to do underwater combat as such because you have good. a swim speed. You're just going up to strike, but it also has an attack of opportunity. It's going to try to bite you before you get... Do you before you get to it? Okay. Troy. You still count as having your shield a lot, doesn't matter. Yeah. I rolled pretty yeah. darn well. What's your armor class with the shield? 26. Okay. 15 on the dice is gonna be another hit. So it bites down again. He's like, don't don't you come out here, please. <laughs> Let me attack these other things that are doing ton more damage. Uh but ooh, very close to minimum damage. 17 points of piercing. Okay. Right. All right. Standard action. All right. And then I'm going to, I mean, 
We say standard action. How about we do that full action? That's that Star Knight oh. challenge. How about we do oh, that? Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, move forward, make the attack, and then I try to make a intimidate. So we'll make an attack slash with my sword. I use my big sword. Big sword and slash. D2 versus KAC. That is a hit. Hey, for 15 slashing. Shing. Okay, sure. Right, right, right through its its barrel chest. That's just the size of a small submarine, a submersible, Whoa. cutting right into it. And twenty five on the intimidate. That is a success as well on the intimidate right. check. Oh, it, it is not happy with Jam from. This might be just a Jam from Plesia sort of fight the rest of the day. <laughs> if Asher and Sky hadn't <laughs> nearly killed it with a single <laughs> stroke, go ahead and make an attack of opportunity because this thing is. Swimming closer to shore and then popping out on land. I don't know how much movement speed it's got on land. Not a lot. So All right. 20? It is. The, does the Intimidate give it a... No. I forget. That's Shaken. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. I believe you are correct. Sure, sure. Look. So if it has the Shaken condition, it is basically all of its role. Saving throws, attacks, skills, ability checks. Is it also flat-footed? No. From the trick? No, I think it's only it's to your attack for, for your attack and um, until you get me. to a higher okay. level. If I think is a thing, maybe. Uh, yeah. So that is going to be miss. The, uh, oh, oh, you thinking? Oh, wait, I have a I have a reroll. Oh, gosh, don't let me forget to use it. Do you want to use a you have a level reroll? Is that a thing? No. Mm, I, I think I've already used it for this level. I think you're I, the only one who has. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, I don't I don't think I can. You know what, Jabert? Because hmm. you're cool. Go ahead and take Tyler's. Yay! No. <laughs> you have Tyler's. Is, uh, I'm sorry. It is flat-footed or off-target until the beginning of my next turn. Oh. That's all it says. It, it doesn't say that it's just for me. Hmm. No, the Envoy abilities were just for the Envoy, less that was successful. I think we're getting confused with Pathfinder because Pathfinder, I know my rogue, like, it, uh, it only applies to my is. attacks. Huh. No, typically it's if you're fainting in Pathfinder 2E, it can be everyone's attacks if it's like a critical. It's a critical oh, fight. true. But I mean, like my my rogue, like tumble through and things like that, like or tumble behind or whatever it is, mm-hmm. is only for my attack. But anyway, trick attack, debilitating trick at fourth level. It just says you can make the target flat footed until the beginning of your next turn. Oh, so that that's debilitating trick. Yes. If you want to apply that debilitation that that's different than your regular trick regular trick is just you instead of like extra damage for example for a debilitation one of the ones you can take is flat-footed uh you did not say that though so (laughs) wait i'm so confused it says when you succeed at both the skill check and the attack roll of your trick attack you can make the target flat-footed or off target target it doesn't say that it's instead of doing damage well, there's. I thought you had some other options with your debilitating. That's you. You can get those as as exploits. You can you can pick up new options as exploits. But oh, yeah, level four is just flat footed or off target. I'm going to I'm going to make the ruling. You do have to say if you want to do one or the the other before we we move on from here on out. What? Don't forget. Don't forget your debilitating trick. We have Look. always just made it flat footed. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll call it every time. But it, the damage applies too. It's not one or the other. No, the, the ad- additional debilitations later on, I guess, is what I'm I'm thinking of. Obviously, it takes the trick damage if you trick it. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm operative, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> you would think it would be because you forgot about debilitating trick on your turn. That I attack- did not. It always, <laughs> it always, it always happens. But okay. I'll, well, I'll say I'm it. saying it can always happen, but you have to say I'm making it off target. I'm making it flat footed. Great. I'm just the adding piece. it to my trick attack notes so that it you better makes because it the operative just did 44 damage last turn. <laughs> Guess what? You have to play it exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly as the book demands or else <laughs> I'm going to attack it right now. I'm taking this op- operative off the table. Here we go. The plesiosaur is moving over to you and uh, just eat that gun hand, please. Please, goodness gracious. A four on the dice. Look at us. Look look how well we've done. You know 
know for a fact I'm using episode reroll. It's got to. It's got to happen. It's got to be better than a four. A nineteen on the uh, dice. No critical effect. Like I said, no critical effect whatsoever. This is a bite for twenty-two points of piercing damage, and we're on to Zillix Thel's turn. Let's see. Wait, wait, so, so just I, I just want to clarify something. So right. So it took. I mean, I know it rolled a nineteen, mm-hmm. but it is taking two from being off target, two from being shaken. Well, once again, you didn't say off target or flat. No, 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 because no, because he's intimidated and he's not attacking me. Oh, it, that's also because he's, your he's challenged. Yeah, because because I challenged him and he's he's ignoring my challenge. So Did you target. update your your armor class, Rebecca? Here is it still seventeen? It is seventeen. Yes. All right, I've rolled a nineteen. It's definitely a hit. I can okay. confirm that. Okay. Yeah. But thank you, Jibbert. Yeah. So he's he's a firm. So, so taking a yeah. Anyway, well, taking fine. how much? 22 points piercing. That's it. That's all, all it can do. Drew, we're on to you. It looks very hurt here, but it is trying to destroy an Asher in Sky. So to be clear on my turn, I'm going to boost and then shoot it with a gun. Just so we're clear on all of that. Okay. You should tell that to your dice, that that is your intent, that you are going to shoot and you should, you should add in hit. You should also add in hit. Oh, no. No. Or on the dice. Drew, you have a level reroll as well. If you like. Norse Foundry guaranteed that you could reroll this once per level. A, a d20 roll. That's I, not a natural one. I feel like it's not going to work for this because my gun is not going to work for this very much anyway. So, so just, saving it and you know, probably losing it. Got know, it. Save it for the old dusty trail. Uh, Got it. <laughs> Miles Redacted is next. Can I roll? Was it physical science? Life, life science, life science. Creature, yeah. Don't have a lot else to tell you about it, but I bet you know something. Yes. What would you like to know? How is its reflex? It is. It's n- not. Wor- it's not its worst. It's not its best. It's right there in the middle. You, you, you going in for <laughs> going in for a a kill? Yeah. Why not? Okay. I'm gonna just go ahead and make the. Reflex. Well, I'm going to make the attack of opportunity first because you're coming at it. So, <laughs> did you already make a tap of opportunity? Oh, before it its turn happened. Yes, yes, I did. But in redacted in the face. What is your KAC, Miles? Do you just upgrade? Did you upgrade armor? Did you say yeah, you nineteen? <laughs> okay, eight on the dice with a minus four. It still hits. Because this thing still has no cover on the air starship. So it does a little bit of damage. Near minimum damage. 17 points of piercing. And let me make that reflex save. I believe we've got the DCs right here because it's taken a minus two because of the shaken. I think this is actually going to be a fail. <laughs> I think I think Jam from... <laughs> Did do it for you here. Oh, I'm guessing this right. is ramming speed. Yeah, ramming. I hope, I hope your damage was a little oh, shaken, not stirred. It is like a just a fail nine on the dice. I'll look at my so if ram. It's five d four. A lot could be a ton. Ooh, we got it's a lot of fours. Points of damage. Well, pretty pretty good damage. Fours and ones only. It is still alive though. As we get to. Prater, your turn. Move. We'll save. You, you going into the lake? Yeah. You splish, just splash. <laughs> Prater's taking a bath. Splashing around. A will save. What are you casting? Man. Oh, you're giving it the old. Oh, no. Giving it the old no command whatsoever. Natural 20. <laughs> All right. I'm going to spend a. Oh, no, no, I don't have to spend a roll. You're taking five non-lethal damage. <gasps> Gosh, because of your mystic connect. This is my mystic connection backlash. Let me just make sure. I'm, I'm pretty sure command is mind affecting, but I should just make sure. Yeah, <laughs> certainly, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah, it is. <laughs> it is. Five non-lethal. Why, why is it five? Is it a uh, level or level? Well, that is, believe it or not, enough to drop this plesiosaur. You had four hit left. 
and as oh. it falls to the ground, ooh, like, a quick snooze! It is not right. lethal, so it's it's still alive. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! Yeah, kill it uh, quickly! It's coming back! It's coming back! The <laughs> spare parts moves over to the edge of the water. Now that it's down, it's like, would you like me to lift this out of the water? It might yeah. take a while, but I would like to keep <laughs> this as a pet. It it is a Nessie type plesiosaur, very pleasing <laughs> to the eye. I suggest we call it the Lost Ness Monster. <laughs> Please um, give me this. I need something. <laughs> no, no. Oh, we yeah, absolutely. We we I give it to you. <gasps> we don't want it to keep it. Thank you. Why not? Well, wait. Are we leaving the robot in the lake with the monster? I it's, mean, it's on the edge of the lake. It's like slowly trying to like lift no, one. If we leave the robot in the lake time. with the monster, it's the monster's going to come back as an ally as the pet of this robot at the end. (laughs) Why did you leave me behind? (laughs) Get him, Lost Ness. Are we we creating the new book six boss right here, right now? Yeah, this is... I am kidding. Do you want me to shove this into the water again? Do we want to kill it or no? Are we trying to keep it alive for some reason? I I don't know why we would. I mean, not particularly. I kind of want to turn it into a coat. Is that not what we always do with things like this? Yeah, I I think that Redacted would probably want to take some meat for new butcher friend. Oh, Quibbo, we will give him some Uh, dino meat. I'm sure he could do something with that. Probably. I can pretty roll life science to see if this creature is endemic or invasive perhaps yeah i mean i think after seeing the lumacantha which has been seen in the packed worlds and this creature which while like wildly perhaps descendant does match descriptions of ancient dinosaurs that that you have have heard of in packed worlds maybe on galerion it definitely doesn't seem like something that has shown up in any of the other charters, but is perhaps because this this area, this valley doesn't seem like it's supposed to be here on this planet, at least not here in this part of the world. It is All right. indeed an I, anomaly. Uh, so maybe it's mi- maybe it is. This is its natural habitat, but not this area of the world. I think Prater would probably walk up to it and then connect to its unconscious mind and show it the like nightmares of the eldritch cosmos which then cause it to die you you freddy cougar in this please i'm freddy yeah i'm gonna can i freddy cougar the please or what role would you like me to make to to try and do that <laughs> you you get inside of its mind and i and i guess i would make a will save oh wow well maybe i don't well, the 19 is pretty good. Can you make a pretty will good. save while unconscious? Yes. 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 Except yeah, no. Probably not, but... You find the please you're, f- like, fighting off, like, 10 dinosaurs in its its dream world. <laughs> and, like, doing really well. Just, like, <laughs> absolutely <laughs> wrecking, like, 10 other dinosaurs. Rawr, and, I'm a contender. And you go over to, like, try and mess with it, and it just stares at you, and you yeah. burst into flames in its dream world. You got Freddy Cougar right back. <laughs> wow. That's a very, yeah. I don't know if we should kill this thing. It's very strong. I feel like this is a pinnacle of the species. You, you, you come back out I'm of your mind. a very strong and mind. Yeah. Spare parts is like lifting you up. Like, please don't kill it, Mr. Pradier. <laughs> I named it. it. All. I would like to keep it alive. Mm. Did you name it Old Yeller? Its name is Nesnor. Nesnor. Okay. Well, that's good. Uh, Caddy Wampus comes up with a, a pistol that he seemingly pulled out of nowhere. And it's like, nope, it, I, I'm pretty sure we got to put this thing down. So, sorry, spare parts. <laughs> I mean, we, we, we've been, we have been sorely lacking in a, in a pet this season. So <laughs> it's mostly water based. So probably just going to stay here in this lake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they can be, keep, keep up with you on foot. It's like it's like one of those one of those like big money discs. It doesn't matter where it is. It's just uh, it's our pet wherever it is. You know, we'll just know that it's out there in the world. Right. True. True. Yeah. Ooh, can someone Speaker roll? Enge- oh, Miles, have redacted rule engineering really quick just to invent pokeballs right here, right now, <laughs> and then we'll just pokeball it. Miles, nope. if you roll, if you roll 
It's about to say, if you're all two natural 20s, it happens, but no. <laughs> <laughs> it was very right. close. Two on the dice. So, so can we say that he does invent some sort of ball, and then we throw it at it, and it doesn't work, thus doing one point of bludgeoning damage and killing <laughs> the creature? <laughs> you have months and or years with the survival skill. You can rear a wild animal, succeeding at checks in order to earn its trust over time. So if you guys want to come back here, we are mm-hmm. on the time scale in this campaign of years. <laughs> or it would be relevant. You actually could do yeah. this. <laughs> if you would like to keep it alive. <laughs> yes. Dude, dude, we should we should totally we have should. this this beer like just just I mean, this is a friendly magical Leoplerodon. All right. All right, we're keeping it alive. It's a friendly Yay. magical Leoplerodon. We'll come back for it later and try to train it. Oh, you know what would be great in training wild creatures? Oh, you don't be so cool swimming with one of these guys? Oh, yeah, oh, like a swimming oh, mount? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Dope doing that. But <laughs> be the coolest. If we kill more fletch hounds, which have awesome coats and probably taste delicious, I'm sure it would increase them the to training the rate. Plesiosaur. Can the plesiosaur live in salt water? Could we put it in the ocean? Yeah, Patrick. I mean, they're probably... What, what, what do you know about salt water? Yeah, yeah. variants? Yeah. <laughs> I, I gotta imagine it does also live there. This is a pretty wicked looking beast. Uh, yeah, why, why, why you, you guys? Put it in the ocean, we're never so, gonna see it again. It's we can dr- sail like, around on it after we tame it. Like I would love, oh, uh, I would okay. love to have like a <laughs> like a. I sea thought you friend. were like setting it out to pasture by oh, putting no, it in the ocean. No, 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 Rebecca no. thought we were doing a catch and release, but like where we traveled it like <laughs> hundreds of miles across dry land to release. Carry it me to the river Jordan, <laughs> <laughs> jumping over us. Go. Beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, at the very Drew least. has a free willy fantasy that he really wants to live out here on the show. You oh. can build up fish fair to have its own coolest aquarium on the entire planet. Please, you yes. fish fair more like a plesiosaur fair. Um, we'll have to rename it when we get back. As you guys are debating this, this thing does gain a hit point back <laughs> and shake it <laughs> off. <laughs> and it does not start attacking you. It seems almost kowtowed to your attacks. I had something on its next turn. It was going to run away anyway as it slumps backwards, kind of keeping a defensive stance, like hissing at you like a like a crop down just the spare parts is the first to be like on the edge of the shore being like no come back come back Nesnor we love you those of us with the capacity for love we <laughs> love you it just slinks back into the water and kind of disappears in the silt oh it's so long so long Nessie we'll come back we'll come back later and with a wink they all turn around and move on yeah you do find after this thing has left the the shore here it has dislodged perhaps some things that were sunken to the bottom of the lake as you see several more articles of clothing in different colors most of them red and orange kind of plostovian colors float to the surface as well as an advanced med kit just oh. pops right <laughs> Right. Oh, that's a shame. That's a shame. Oh, no. I spent I all my money them. on that. Oh, uh, beans. Man. So lame. With that, this AP did that to you. Yeah. Rebecca, this is why you buy the AP volumes and read ahead. <laughs> Wait, you didn't really? You didn't buy the AP volume? Like, oh, I recommended everyone do you and know all the secrets before. <laughs> I was wondering why you guys weren't getting these puzzles faster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Rebecca, if you want to use your level reroll to reroll the decision to buy that advanced med kit, I just saw the price. Yes. <laughs> uh, you can uh, and use this one instead. Ooh. Oh my goodness gracious. I thought I was so smart thinking like of a utilitarian purchase that actually could be useful. Man. Well- you're right. I mean, the, it, the the off this, smart. This AP agrees with you. He's like, you know what? This pro- the parties playing this probably need a uh, advanced med kit. Thank you, Kate Baker. Is what we should all be saying. Thanks, Kate. Same page. Thank you. Yeah, yeah the, use use that reroll. Get that cash back. Yeah. Yeah. Oh well. I guess. I guess. I wish I didn't have to use a reroll, but it's cool. <laughs> you wouldn't have used it anyway because you you just roll nothing but nineteens and twenties. <laughs> all over the place. I'm like begging you guys to use these, these rerolls. Right. 
So after examining the rest of the clothing that seems to pop up here, you also find what looks like the shredded remains of a pack. You don't find any body parts. You don't find, indeed, it looks like perhaps maybe the police has taken a look at attacked this camp and and grabbed grabbed at a tent or something and just took a bunch of clothes in the lake. But you don't find any bodies here. Taking a pretty pretty extensive look. <clears throat> Oh, I get it. They were shooting at the plesiosaur. I see. I see. Yeah, perhaps they, they scared sense. it off. But. Right. Let's, uh, oh, right. Trying to follow the Well, tracks. they may have scared it off, but I think it scared them off, too, is yeah. what I'm gathering. They both scared yeah. each other off, it seems. Yeah. Like. yeah. They did not they want to make friends with the plesiosaur. <laughs> so, yeah, you want to continue going around the, the edge of the lake here to where these tracks continue forward? Yeah. Rebecca, how bad is it going to be when we find this expedition and they're like, oh, Asher and Sky, you found our lost advanced med kit. Thank you. We'll take that back. We need it so badly. <laughs> You're like, oh. Oh, oh. man. Ooh, she, this is awkward. Ooh. I know for the for a fact she's got the credits to buy another one. <laughs> Let her tell you that she's going to spend it on something like a weapon. Magic, magic literally is like I just conned her out of a book reroll <laughs> and went went to the bank with it. Woo! All right, not book reroll, level reroll, level reroll. Sorry, would have been wasted if you didn't use it before level six. Rapidly approaching, probably. <laughs> Speaking of, <laughs> oh yeah. By the way, no, no, no. can you imagine? Uh, yeah. Yes, we absolutely can. <laughs> That seems like something I would do. I have like, I went from such warm generosity with Vanguard, Asher and Sky to absolute hatred of operative <laughs> Asher and Sky. I swear to God, I will pick apart every single rule in the operative, operative abilities. Going into the next area, you find a humongous, thick trunk tree areas. Huge. Huge. Huge trees with broad leaves amongst its many branches, making a a thick canopy that blocks out most of the light and rain and gives the entire area a a golden green kind of glow to it in, in broad daylight here. Oh, I, I guess I should ask. <laughs> Some of you got a little mess up. Do you guys take a 10 minute break? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I will I, take yeah. 10 minutes, yes. I need 10 minutes for sure. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, those that, that do, please do. As you continue on, though, why don't you make me a perception check moving into this next kind of quadrant of the Lost Valley? I'll be happy to. Oh, perception. Got huge eyes. They see everything. Do they? Oh, yeah, 21. Actually, that was uh, counting on rolling another one on perception. 18. Pretty good. Once again, everyone failed here except the operative. <laughs> sure and Sky, you guys get on your knees and thank Rebecca for changing class right now. <laughs> yeah, As, like with uh, a 21 is wild. Yeah. <laughs> 21 is a fail. This is a DC 22 perception check to notice signs indeed of life in this area before stumbling across said life forms. Asher and Sky looks down and finds what looks like a large chunk of dried out leathery eggshell a, a crushed eggshell on the ground why don't you make me those of you that can or will a life science check another natural one <laughs> from Zillix oh no Radier taking a look at the shell indeed this is another perhaps I mean, like you, you have like the curvature of this section of, of shell and how big it is. It's like a Dorito chip, you know, it's like a big Dorito chip. Estimating from there, you can tell this was a, a very large egg lane, huge dinosaur, another massive inhabitant perhaps of this valley. And while dried out, it does seem fairly fresh, like maybe a few days old. Do you guys want to make me a survival check as you're you're looking around this area? I, I well, explore. Prater crouches down and, and he holds the eggs and he's like, Ian was right. Life found a way. Do do we know what flavor of Dorito? Uh Prater Purple takes a bite into it. To tell me. <gasps> Dino <laughs> DNA flavor. <laughs> you guys all watching our Silic spell puts the eggshell in his mouth. <laughs> Zillix Zillix sticks his his arms like elbow deep in a huge pile of dookie 
<laughs> that's a that's a big pile of flame right there. That's a spicy meatball. Zillix, yeah, natural twenty. You spot indeed what you thought was just massive divots in the ground, tracks perhaps of local dinosaurs leading in the same direction as the tracks of the exploration party. It does look from these tracks, this is a mix of very huge adults and mixed in with them some lighter, smaller juveniles, you know, still the size of like cows, still like medium to large creatures, perhaps, but not as large as these these other ones. From the can tracks, tell can what we direction tell? they're ha- heading? Like I said, they're, they're both kind of moving southwesternly in the same direction that the, the exploration team was was going. So you, you don't hear, you don't see said dinosaurs, but you seem to be heading into perhaps territory of of these creatures. And it's up to you guys how you want to proceed, because you've rolled very well here. If you want yeah. to attempt to stealth through this area, you can. There's, there's the ability to, to move around the area you might lose the trail you might have to spend some time trying to find it but it's a, With a high enough roll we should be able to tell if these are carnivorous or herbaceous dinosaurs from the tracks yeah from their poop i mean technically you should be able to do both but specifically from the tracks i just want to see what my best dinosaurs. i'm gonna find out what my best friend kate baker has to to say about that I mean, she doesn't have to say anything i mean that's just that's just science dog that's just like look it's the difference between a deer print and a wolf print jabert you science back me up on this this falls within the realm of i got nothing science. i got nothing i'm not, <laughs> I'm, I'm not really much I'm not, I'm not a zoologist here i'm just i'm oh gosh don't put me on the spot like this this is really not my <laughs> i'm so sorry okay. i'm so okay. sorry <laughs> <laughs> Hyperventilates in science. I, I know. <laughs> J- Jabert just. Alright, fine. I don't know any science. I was, I've been making it up the whole time. <laughs> Jabert just <laughs> crashes and it says dino DNA. <laughs> I I think because Zillix figured out with the natural 20, you know, sizes of these things, size wise and kind of speed wise, you do suspect this to at the very least be omnivore omnivorous perhaps carnivorous just by the size stride and placement of the 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 tracks which seems to be mostly bipedal i mean how's it's everybody an how's everybody's stealth not, course, not bad great not ideal mine is plus eight i got plus 10 mine's 14 <sighs> Good. We weren't asking the operative, but I, but you know, that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. Uh, mine is Dookie. Like, can't do it. Can we investigate right, so the Dookie? Are we agreeing we sacrifice Tyler? <laughs> Stealth check. <laughs> Spare parts is like, I have silent running mode. I didn't want to tell you for fear you would turn off my vocal chip if you knew that existed. <laughs> but I can does. be quiet. <laughs> let, let me see that vocal chip real quick. <laughs> Please, no. <laughs> if you, if you, Deign to de- deactivate. I will reactivate my SAS chip, and then you'll get what's for. <laughs> oh boy! Just take oh, other no. batteries in general. I'll do that. <laughs> is, is they're here for Miles? Is... We already named them spare parts for a reason. <laughs> like you guys are gonna be like out of all <laughs> weapon batteries at the end of the day, and you're like, please spare parts. I need it. It's like that will kill me. No, <laughs> that's oh, the sacrifice God. I'm willing to make. <laughs> Caddy Wampus is like, I can take a nap on 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 spare parts, and I I, I could try not to to nap. That that would be pretty pretty stealthy. Yeah, that's that's stealthy. In fact, I've been kind of asleep this entire time. Did you guys? Did I see you fighting a dinosaur a while ago? <laughs> that was nuts. You yeah, brick killed a guy. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I'm, well, I mean, we can move forward stealthily. That's fine. Just be aware. Prater's probably going to step on a comically large stick. Well, if, if 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 stealthily is not going to work, should we just follow the tracks and take our chances um, with the with the dinos? I'm well, happy. It, I'm happy to let if, our stealthier folks sort of go out in front. I don't. I don't mind. I don't mind. If you uh, would like, there, Kate Baker has made some delightful rules for the stealth in this area. The majority of the party will have to succeed at the stealth check, and you can drag some other unstealthy folks along, kind of in uh, your wake. And that will 
include the carrier drone unless you want to f- throw them in the vehicle. Is the carrier drone, is it? Is it really actually capable of... No, it's of, a quarter drone. What are we talking about? I was oh, going to say, is it oh, a quarter whoa, drone? Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Don't you dare, uh, Jabert. What, what is your question? Is it is it actually po- capable of going in silent mode and actually rolling the stealth, or were you just goofing? Uh, it has. I don't think actually it has stealth as a skill, so it would be a flat roll. It would be best to throw it in the vehicle. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to be in the boat with with the Praetor and that robot. I'm I'm bad at it, so. Mm-hmm. You still need to make a stealth check to not sneeze. Let's see. Don't you dare sneeze. I, I read um, that uh, that otters don't sneeze. So order order drone. <laughs> I know for a fact that otters do sneeze, and it's so cute. It's, <laughs> it's the cutest thing ever. <laughs> Take it, Jabert. Uh, <laughs> the, the porter drone has the skill unit. It has a sass. You know, it's a perception. Unfortunately, the, the the skill is SAS. So proficient with SAS, SAS and perception, yes, <laughs> and and can carry twenty bolt, which is kind of a lot. That's, That's a lot. lot. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it is a carrier drone. <laughs> what well, does carry? Uh, right. So, well, if you guys want to uh, stealth forward, like I said, we're gonna need three successes on the the DC here. Just three. What's the DC, Patrick? Oh yeah, you don't know what that could be. You don't you don't know. You don't know. But you will know if you succeed or fail, perhaps. Zillix activates his sheath array. Oh which, yeah. It's gonna increase the this skill by two. I didn't roll a one. Yes. That's twenty four for Zillix. Right. And technically, Miles, if you are staying in the vehicle, I will allow you to make a piloting check. For this, okay. I don't because I, I, I kind of imagine the airship is like one of the quieter vehicles, right? <laughs> you know, unless you're bouncing into branches and things like that. So, okay, it's rigged for silent running. Okay, twenty-seven. Yes, I've got all three of your guys's rolls here, and I will tell you flat out, we've got three out of five successes. Nice. So, some of these are just squeaking by. Zillix, oh my goodness, Drew, you're really pushing the envelope. It was DC 21. As oh, wow. Well, now indeed, I, I did roll a 24 with a with the bonus, so I'm just saying. Oh, yeah, well, that's pretty good. Then the lowest, believe it or not, was the operative. Yep. <laughs> if that's the case. <sighs> but yeah, as you're, you're moving through this territory in the distance through these massive trees, you see what looks like a family of dinos and you and you get to watch them the miracle of birth as you see one of these huge leathery sack eggs should be broken uh, patrick i'm gonna stop you right here you need mm-hmm. to do the voice if you're gonna tell us about nature you need to do look the now there you go look now as we watch as the the dinosaurs of new galerion welcome into their fold their herd once more a new life on the planet and let me let me show you what these guys look like. These dinosaurs that you definitely did not want to fight a family of. Oh my goodness, you did not. But all the brains, Patrick. They all have brains. It, yeah. <laughs> they also have massive jaws. They look like what if Triceratops, but also T Rex. Yeah. And four arms. <laughs> oh, I don't like that. Oh, I don't like that yeah. one bit. Be yeah, a real this... shame if we're dad to just lay it on the horn right now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go! I want oh, wow. dinosaur leather seats in my uh, my vehicle. Yeah, uh, giant blue dinosaurs. They seem very preoccupied with you know, like guarding their nesting sites. So move you guys moving through stealthily. They don't seem to notice. They don't seem to take notice of you. You you do hear some clicks from the back seat as it seems like. Spare parts is <laughs> taking some photos. <laughs> you, you see, they're like mouth lighting up, but they're in one mode. Are we stealthy enough to to abscond one of those eggs? De- oh, definitely Whoa. not. Oh, a thousand times, no. 
A you thousand. remember the part where he's like, you barely skirt, you barely make it? <laughs> uh, these are new dinosaurs to the Starfinder world. They're their new build of a dinosaur known as the Waydanosaurus, which was the, hmm. the original name for the Horizons of the Vast planet here. And oh, yeah, they're pretty, pretty rough. <laughs> they are they are exactly what they sound like Tr- triceratops but with a t-rex mentality <laughs> but uh, unfortunately they this is i can't believe they are huge animals but they don't have swallow hole i would have loved to have just popped out a redacted from that vehicle and, and took in a, a bite-sized I, also, I love i love the sci-fi trope slash penchant of just being like Hey, how do we make this thing science fictiony? Slap <laughs> another pair of arms on him, Tony. That always that always gets the big the big. <laughs> hey, uh, I'm game designer Tony. I'm over here I'm walking here. <laughs> I'm balancing the game here. I know you're calling this fictional character Tony, but that's what Kate Baker sounds like. Kate <laughs> <laughs> just sounds like she owns a pizza shop. Yeah, no. As he as he pass by. This beautiful sight here, beautiful sight of avoiding a combat. Night begins to fall on the Lost Valley. And as you get into the next area, and perhaps you can start finding a place to, to make camp. Is that is that something that sounds good? You guys want to travel through the night? Like the like I like the sound of camp. The, camp the canopy above you does break up eventually from these massive, massive trees. And you, you, you find yourself in a few clearings with, with large trees rubs huge berry bushes 10 15 feet wide and some 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 areas to hide but also look out amongst the stars you know not too often beside looking over viridian do you get a chance to to see the night sky above new galerion and you get to see an entire galaxy of of stars arrayed out far away from the lights of Plostov City here. Constellations, perhaps folks have not seen for many years, some of which you, you, you put them together, you connect the dots, spell out the words, a to be continued. Oh, Aww. we don't have to have a second fight this episode because you guys, y'all are amazing. We did a good job. Did it. Still should have laid on the horn. I, I mean, I mean, not not as bad as the the plesiosaur, but there are two of these adults, and they are they are rough by them. So don't worry, don't you worry, Miles. Oh, there's plenty more dinosaurs uh, next time <laughs> to steal from. <laughs> yeah, we'll get to some more Lost Valley exploration next week. Uh, until then, thank you guys for playing with me. Thank you, thank you. Patrick. Patrick. Uh, listeners, thanks for listening. We'll catch you on next week's episode of Cosmic Crit. Good night. Uh, well. Good night. Bye. Cosmic Crit, an officially licensed partner of Paizo Incorporated. The Starfinder role-playing game and adventure paths are trademarks of Paizo. All Pathfinder and Starfinder images are property of Paizo and are used with permission.